Okay, so this is one from a while back, and um, I'm going to probably add a f couple of things in here. Um, did once something similar with dolphins and a whale. So the idea behind this is everybody is moving to the left, and out of all these, there's... <laughs> One little fish that decides to like take a look at you. Now, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to probably work on the jellyfish a bit. And I might want to add another. Um, angelfish. Or something exotic with a lot of color. Just not sure where I'm going to place it either somewhere down here or maybe in the corner up there. Um, really like this one. has a lot of color, a lot of personality. Here, I'll just get a little closer so you can see. Um, like this jellyfish, it has a lot of detail. And again, these are the same type, but just muted. Okay, so this is the other one. Um, same premise as one similar. Everybody's going to the right this time, except for one dolphin that's decided to turn and take a look at you. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'm going to put in this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add coral. Um, or another type of dolphin. Or maybe some pilot whales. So it's still kind of up in the air. Now, I'm going to get a close-up of this because I want to show a way I've kind of paint like I draw. Um, and again, I hear a lot of people say, I can't draw. All I, I, all I can draw is stick figures. But um, the way I paint is with little stick figures. And you can see the little cross hatches, and that's the way I kind of develop... Um, some of the texture or color the eye is pretty interesting for me it has a a look of just kind of hard to explain it just I don't know, there's a sadness to it um, and I don't know if I'll be able to ever capture that again Uh, at one point in time, that was my signature. Just an orange dot. Uh, just to be anonymous. Okay, so this is the um, new piece I'm working on. Um, I'm going to be working on this. It's going to be the angelfish, so I've done a demonstration on that, so I won't work on that. Um, this is probably the one I'm going to be doing a demonstration on. Um, I got the foundation going. Uh, now, this is probably about 80-90% done. I'll look at it and figure out little highlights and little things to uh, spice it up some. Um, but this is a smaller piece. Um, so, I'm going to do a demonstration on here. Um, these are I guess butterfly fish, maybe. I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's butterfly fish. And some coral. So I'm going to be working on the coral uh, maybe later. Um, so um, anyway, I'm going to do a demonstration on this because I got about, you know, about a third into it. And I thought I'd try to do a demonstration for the other one there. So now... On these right here, can you see these? Yeah. 
um, they're a little bit darker here and lighter up there with this highlight from the sunlight. This is a little grayed out. Now, this is a little bit darker because this one's more in front of this one. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is going to be yellow and a little bit of white here and a yellow here. Um, and the face is white. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that as time is uh, a factor. So I'm um, just going to go into the, and work on this a little bit. So the tail is um, a little bit brighter yellow. So I, I kind of lay down a little bit of a foundation. Now, because this is coming from the blue background, uh, the colors are kind of mixed with the blue, and that helps with the illusion that it's part of this um, underwater scene. And, and right now it looks like it's bright, but I know the way water colors work. So it looks bright right now, um, but it's going to fade. Um, I'm just going to go over this a little bit. Now I'm going to work on the back of the tail. And this is just to break up that hard line that's right here. That's okay, but uh, I don't like it. Um, and I'm gonna just bring out the the end here. Um, now, of course, I can't do um, the whole thing because it would just be way too long. Um, so I'm just gonna give you kind of an example of the way I would do this one. So this is a, a Payne's Gray, but it's very light. Now the way I'm doing this is the same way I'm gonna do this, only it's gonna be with a bigger, can you see that? No, you can't. Um, anyway, there is the one, and you can see the bigger brush strokes, and I'll probably go in there with some highlights to make them look more like scales, but that's good foundation for the scales. So um, then I'll come back in here and go the other direction, and that's the way I would do the scaling. Now, eventually I'll go back in there and do a really tighter, uh, detailed scale pattern, um, but that's just me. That's kind of for my... And you can see, I'm just barely touching it. And because it's wet already, this would be the wet on wet. So it's a nice little blend. So it, it's still in the kind of the damp position. So when I added a little bit of Payne's Gray darker up there, it just kind of slowly bled and it has a really nice effect. Um, now I'm going to, and I don't want to make these too dark. So I'm going to do the pack fins and I'm using that Asian brush. Now these Asian brushes are worth their weight in gold. I can get a thick line out of them. I can get a dry brush effect. I can get so many different, yeah, they're just phenomenal. Um, and you can see it just has that sharp, sharp point, which, you know, it replaces about, <laughs> 30 different brushes that I have, and they're actually really reasonable. Um, and I usually buy a set that has a multiple set of brushes, but there's just only like two or three that I use for them because that's all I need. Um, now these have these little teeny dark lines in here. And you can see I'm getting the lines thicker now by putting a little bit more pressure on the brush. Like I said, this 
brushes magical. Um, now, okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. Now, I got to tone down the, <clears throat> the color some because I'm going to work on this little bottom part and up here. Now, these have, and I'm just going to break up this little area right in here. So what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of a watery brush and letting it bleed out. That bleeding out adds to the detail. So I'm going to come back in here and it may bleed a little bit, which I'm okay with. And I'll come back in here and use a darker color. To tighten up those dots or spots. Now, when I put down things, I, there's no way I can duplicate something exact. It's just impossible with watercolors. They, ha they take on a life of their own. And once you go a direction, uh, you just made a commitment. But using a different technique of uh, blending and... Um, And you can see I'm checking that black that was, or paints gray there, and just expanding it out. And this is going to be, it should be darker, but it, it's not going to show up, so I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter. <clears throat> and I'm going to come to the eye. Now I might have to come back into that and um, bring a little light, a white in the sides and maybe a highlight. And you can see this crazy little brush makes such delicate little lines. Um, anyway, so I have a lot of different things I'm going to be going through. I'm going to probably put some, yeah, you can see the yellow blending in there. And those are just accidents that add to the originality of every single painting. So if I try 300 times to make this look like the other one above, it ain't going to happen. It'll get close, but it just won't. And then paste it on there. Um, and I kind of mentioned it in another video that I used to use frisket to block things out and people use that. But when it comes to water, that is your enemy. Um, when you finish, it looks like you've put a stamp on it and just, it looks like you could peel it off. And that doesn't work for me. But there are people that, you know, like that look. Uh, they're trying to go for something that's really super bright, and and I understand that, but that's not my technique for doing some stuff. <clears throat> anyway, let's put the time on this. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, I'll probably show about ninety percent because that's what I like to do, because I never really finish anything. And I always add more and it would just be little teeny things that I see here and there and that's just for me so I'm just giving the basics of how I would do this and you can see this blue is still blue on here on the on the top one up here but um, and then I'll probably go in there and just do some blending and, and little bits of highlights that look more like scales and see if I can get closer on that and you can see the 
angelfish is taking on a life. Anyway. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now so I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.